folks. We got ourselves a brand new little band saw and we're going to do an unboxing and a review of it. I bought this band saw for $165 at the time of this video on Amazon and I got free shipping with it because although I do have a big band saw in the shed in the backyard, actually I need the table. Thank you. I got tired of threading through snow and rain and bad weather every time I wanted to cut something on the band saw. So I got this small one for the workshop. I have seen some reviews on them where, while some of them did come defective from the manufacturer, others seemed to me like the person just hadn't set it up properly. So let's set this thing up and see what it can do. There we go. Miter gauge. Fence. Uh, little screws. table. It's a cast metal. I don't think it's steel, is it? Nope, it's cast aluminum. And here's the saw. It's all cast aluminum and I think it's a big heavy ABS plastic. The cover is plastic. At first glance everything seems to be in good order. It's a good thing. I've seen some reviews where it came off the axis and there were some parts missing and broken. This one seems to be in good shape. Now, I have set up enough band saws in my life that uh, there should be nothing unusual about this one. But for the sake of argument let's say we glanced at the manual. All right, that's done. Let's get setting it up. There are some wonderful videos on setting up band saws already available on YouTube. So I'm just gonna go over the very basics of it. First, we need to get the table installed. For that, we need to get this thing off, which I'm going to need some tools for. Don't lose this. I get the feeling that I don't want you to take all this stuff out. But it's just simpler that way. So the band saw came with four screws, a bunch of washers, and this is the only part that really requires any assembly. So I'm concluding that that's what they go to. And that's without reading the manual. So this goes here. I'm gonna make sure it's a square. Although I'm not entirely sure it matters too much. Now let's put this thing back in place. This has to come off before you can slide it in there. Plastic. A lot of it is plasticky. Just pop this thing up. Oh, okay, so this thing doesn't pop off. Well, let's work around it then. Put this thing back on. It keeps the table from wobbling itself in different directions. Yeah, now it's rigid. Now to set up the blade, first we need to make sure that the guides and bearings are backed off all the way so it has room to move around. There is this setup here. And there is a set down here, we just need to make sure that they are out of the way, which they already are, so we don't have to mess with them right now. Let's set up the blade tracking. To set the blade tension, we use this knob at the top here. Then you check the tension by seeing the blade deflection 
on this longest part here. Don't do on this side because there's guides and other things that can get in the way and it's not going to give you an accurate reading. On this side you want it to be about 5mm deflection which seems to be very handy the distance between here and the end of this wall so you don't even need a ruler or anything. If you can lightly push it this way this tension is actually pretty good. To set up the tracking there is a 13mm nut in the back here that you loosen so you can move this knob a little and adjust the tracking. On this particular saw you want the part just behind the teeth, just behind the gullet, to be in the center of the wheel. So to do that we're going to turn the knob in the back while spinning the wheel with, the, with your hand and you turn that knob to adjust where the blade will go. Almost there. There we go. Next to are just the blade guides. So with the provided little wrench, we'll loosen this thing. We'll loosen the whole assembly. The blade guides, you want them to sit just behind the gullet of the teeth. And the guides, you want them as close as you can get to the blade without actually touching it. And this first bearing here in the back is the same thing. You want to get as close as you can without actually touching it. And the same thing down here, there is another one that needs to be adjusted. Now the final adjustment, we just need to make sure the table is square to the blade. So we get a square that you know is right and uh, we turn it a little and we match it to the blade and this little thing here is terrible I can tell you already. Use a different square. This one is too tall. There we go. Because this thing here, look, it makes my square wobble into it so I have to make sure I'm holding it by this part. Alright, when the table is set, tighten it all up, make sure it doesn't move. And there's a screw here that you can set, supposedly, for the correct height so the table always returns to square. Let's make sure it didn't move. Let's find out how noisy this thing is, and here we go. Not too bad, I'm talking a normal volume of voice. Now the ultimate question is, will it fit my vacuum? Nope, but not to worry, I have an adapter. There we go. Let's cut something. Let's see what I have here in my scrap bucket. Give it something bigger to chew through. Now here's a trick to check if the blade is square to the table. And we'll do a cut like this and then to check out the square of the blade we'll turn it around and measure it against the back. Watch this. It's a little bit off, just a little bit. So let's split the difference. Try this again. Here we go. 
perfectly square. All right, let's give it something truly interesting. This is a piece of Gabon ebony that I have uh, made several strange cuts testing it for a different project I'm working on, so I don't feel bad about wasting it cutting here to test the saw out. I have to say, this is excellent, much better than I expected. This stuff is incredibly hard. And look at how fine I got to the edge without it ever deviating. Not bad. Well done, little saw. So the skill nine inch bench top bend saw, what do I think of it? I actually like it. I'm gonna go as far as say that I love it. It did everything I asked of it to do with the proper setup, so it's not without problems. First and foremost, when this comes out of the box, you have to set it up properly. It will not cut right if you don't. So set it up and it should do all the cutting you need that you don't require an industrial band saw. I'm still impressed by the way it cut the ebony here. Now it's not without problems. This fence is not a good fence. It's better than not having a fence, but it's not a good fence. The miter gauge is the biggest offender of the whole thing. This is complete garbage. I wish they had done this different. This light, I don't like it that it only comes on or off when the power of the saw is on or off. I wish it had its own switch to turn it on or off whenever I want it. The table is cast aluminum, which I'm not a fan of. It's serviceable, it does the job, but I wish this was cast iron. And Again, the miter gauge should be different, but overall it did everything I asked of it and I'm still impressed by how nice and how fine it cut the ebony. This is not easy to do, this is tremendously hard wood and it kept track just fine with the crappy fence. <laughs> so if you know what you're doing, you can make this work. I like that it is a cast aluminum body and I like the design, it's not just the tubular steel frame that every other bandsaw seems to have these days or the pressed sheet metal. So yeah, would I recommend it? If you have the time and the disposition to set it up, again, it has to be set up properly. If you have the time and the disposition to set it up, yes, absolutely, this is a good saw. Now my only problem with it now is where am I going to put it? Two weeks later. So it's been over a couple of weeks since I've had the band saw and as you can see as usual with all my cheap tools I've made some modifications to it. The most obvious one is that I've painted it white. Now the reason for that is the shape of the saw it kept reminding me of the turrets on that game portal Hello. and uh, and I felt it would be neat to make it white like the turrets. That's basically it. I'm different. I don't like bolting my tools to the workbench but I have bolted it to a heavy cast iron girdle so that holds it in place very firmly, it's not going anywhere. Another modification I made, I made a, a zero clearance insert here uh, out of a piece of acrylic. I had to pop off the black one that was glued in there. And since I have some acrylic lying around, I also made a sled for the table saw. I had to file these stupid little guides here that they got in the way, but now it works just fine. A big modification I made is with the light. I wired it so I have an independent switch to turn it on or off however I want, whenever I want, so it's not dependent on the saw being powered. So overall I have been very satisfied with this little saw. It's definitely a lightweight saw for hobby or small projects, although I have put a 4x4 through it and it cut it just fine. It needs some adjustment, like most cheap tools that you get. It doesn't come fully fine and ready to use out of the box. Unless you get lucky, you might get one that does. And I have used this thing actually almost every day that I was here in the workshop since I got it, so I didn't realize how much I actually could use one of these. I am satisfied with this purchase, even though I have to make some modifications. And for me, it has been working just fine. So if you have any comments, any questions, leave them below in the comments, please. And that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time. Are you still there?